Hey, Sally here from Bandits and Strength for Dance, and my lovely model today is Bella. We're going to be talking today about fascial trains and specifically anatomy trains as designed by Thomas Myers, who's an actual leading genius in the fascial work. Fascial trains or anatomy trains as they're known uh, describes the way that our muscles all blend into each other. So although at university or when we're studying, we learn stop and start within our muscles, this is an origin, this is an insertion, that's not how it works in practice. They all blend in together through fascial connections and essentially work as long, one long harmonious muscle. So we're going to have a quick look at some of these different trains and then what that would mean for us with our movement training. So the first one we're going to look at is the superficial back line. So that actually starts off here at fascia involved in at the skull. And then if you turn around all the way, so it tracks down the skull here into the neck, down the muscles of the back. I'm just going to tuck that in there. There we go. It comes into sacrotuberous ligament here at the back of the pelvis travels down the back of the hamstrings, into the calf, into the Achilles. And if you just lift your foot up for me, then it travels down into the short flexors on the underside of the foot. So we have two of these running down either side. So then if you look at mobility, for instance, this is why if we ball release the underside of the foot, you can actually improve your forward flexion mobility because releasing here within the foot opens up and affects the tissue all the way up into the back line. The same thing again, if you release muscles here in the rib cage or even here at the base of the skull, you can also see an improvement in your full back line flexibility because these muscles are all interconnected in one line. And that means for a higher kick, or if you want more hamstring flexibility, you don't need to hammer away and overstretch into the hamstrings themselves. Bonus. We are then going to look at the superficial front line. So this comes off the mastoid process here, just at the base of the skull. I'll get you probably to hold here actually. It then comes down through the sternal fascia into your abdominals. It then comes over, comes down your quads, rec fem, into the tendon of your quads here, and then down the front of the shin area into your toe extensors, short and long, all the way down to here. So again, this is going to feed in information all the way up the front of the body. So this would be useful to know if you're wanting to improve your back bends. So you might do a ball release at the front of the thigh and that will help give some motion into your back bend. You might do work here into sternocleinomastoid muscle and that can also help with extensions and getting the leg up and back behind you, so hip extension. Now, a really nice way to tick tock back and forth between the back line and the front line is in yoga if you go back from down dog to up dog. So I'll just show you these. So if you want to pop into down dog for me, Bella. So you can see here, we've got the tissue stretched under the foot all the way up the back of the body. It goes over the back line. And if she rests her head, it continues that way over the skull. So that's our back line on tension or length. And then if she comes forwards into up dog, and just note the toes have come under. So really pushing up. Again, we've now got it coming up the front, rec fem here, through the abdominals. Now, she would need to actually be like that with her head in order to get a nice length into sternocleinomastoid. Brilliant, you can come back into a well-deserved child pose. So if you go backwards and forwards between these two poses, you're going to get a nice opposition lengthening of your superficial back line and superficial front line. 